good morning and how are you doing today? I hope you're having a beautiful day. Oh, I've got on a toasty hot day here. And, oh, now, where were we? Well, we were in the mountains, or the Simeon Mountains of Ethiopia and enjoying beautiful views and the unusual animals that we managed to see. So from the mountains, we came down from that area. We couldn't stay too long. Ethiopia, as it is now, was in so much turmoil. And we had to leave and we went to the capital, Addis Ababa. Now, one of the things we discovered both on the route and in Addis Ababa is that, well, colonial influence, what can I say? Um, we actually made a joke that the British, when they went and colonialized places, they built schools and roads. The French, they built military bases and airports. What did the Italians do? Because they were the colonial power in Ethiopia. They installed coffee machines. <laughs> and one thing you get in the, no, no, there's lots of things. But one of the things you will experience if you ever get to Ethiopia, which I hope you do, is Ethiopian coffee. They have fantastic coffee and even in the smallest of places you find these Italian made coffee machines where you can get all sorts of proper Italian coffee which is fantastic. You also have the Ethiopian coffee ceremony where literally uh, the people walk around the streets with the boiling water and the coals and the, the raw coffee and uh, on the street they have a coffee ceremony where they basically brew the coffee, pour it out, pour it back, brew it, pour it, pour it through until you've got a perfect cup of coffee. It uh, really is quite a unique experience. Ethiopia has its own time pace. There's no hurry about anything there. But unfortunately we couldn't tarry long in Ethiopia and we had to head south. Um, things were not looking good stabilized stability wise and safety wise in Ethiopia which is unfortunate because there is so many wonderful things to see and the people as I said before are fantastic so I uh, sorry, I won't run you over at least I'll try not to uh, we headed south to Kenya dodging the Somalian bandits and the, the, the eastern border of Ethiopia is Somalia so it, uh, which is, yeah, probably the most dangerous country in Africa. And at that point, the Somali bandits were pushing down into Kenya and into that uh, north uh, southeast side of Ethiopia. So we had to skedaddle through as quickly as possible. But leaving Ethiopia wasn't that straightforward because we had to go you at the border is quite close to the Somali border and you have to again like we had in Morocco a military convoy and I believe that is still like that today that was, this is 20 years ago and still today that area has still got a problem so we joined the military convoy it's a two-day convoy it's not it's a long convoy right down the coast and basically they do a roadworthy check on your vehicle because they basically say if you break down or stop on this route, we will leave you and you will be robbed. That's it. You know, it's like if you break down, um, you leave your vehicle and come with us because you will get robbed and possibly kidnapped and killed if you stay. Very encouraging. <laughs> Fortunately, Lara, very roadworthy and uh, um, not likely to break down. No comments about Land Rovers, please. This was a very reliable Land Rover. So off we went and uh, you basically, it's actually the convoy is from the border of Ethiopia. So there's no convoy in Ethiopia. You have to make your own way past the Somali bandits in Ethiopia. Then you get to the border and then the Kenyans have a military convoy that goes down into, into Kenya. So it, uh, you stop at the border, you overnight there. And um, these soldiers, they were serious guys. It uh, was a big military base there on the, on the border. Obviously a big problem with the Somalis um, bandits coming across, unfortunately. And... You overnight in the military base and then you start the convoy. And, you know, after all the tales they were telling us about, you know, you mustn't 
being alone and all this sort of things and breaking down basically said okay th these three trucks um, full of an armored truck and they're full of soldiers they're gonna go ahead you mustn't overtake them and then there'll be these two armored trucks behind you and you're gonna be somewhere in the middle just go at your own pace so these three trucks boom, off they went and then you just drove along in your own pace we were the only foreigners there was a few local um, supply trucks going through they're a bit slower than us so for most of the journey we were actually entirely by ourselves which was a little nerve-wracking because you're like you're looking around and a lot of that area around there especially that time it's very dry and burnt barren looking it's uh, quite desolate and there was nothing there nobody there and it's not an exceptionally good road it's a it's not a tar road it's a gravel road and it was badly potholed and corrugated so you couldn't get any speed and we just drove and kept driving and kept driving and we're going well there is only one road as soon at some point we'll come across the, the, the soldiers that went before there was a couple of checkpoints on the way at, um, and they made us the first one we saw it's all like we just saw a barrier across the road and nobody and we thought what do we do do we crash through it and then we noticed that lurking in the bushes either side were the Kenyan soldiers in their fatigue so we did stop thankfully otherwise this may not have been a good journey for us. Um, they checked our papers, waved us through, and come evening time, we went uh, arrived at Marsabit, which is a town which is completely surrounded by militaries. It's a little town in northern Kenya, but it's been turned into a military strong post because um, they got raided so much by the Somalis coming across the border. And you overnight there, and there is really nowhere to stay. Fortunately, being self-sufficient with our our tent, we could um, park anywhere we could park, we could sleep with our roof tent, or our roof I should say, because we didn't have a roof tent, just a roof, but a flat roof is a good place to sleep. And um, we actually got taken under the wing by a missionary uh, that was there, a church missionary that was there, and they said we could park there, they gave us water, use of their showers, and we spent the night there. They're actually really beautiful there, amazingly peaceful and quiet. Um, had dinner with the missionaries and next morning it was up at the early morning again the second leg into Kenya and it's a real shame because I really wanted to go to Lake Turkana which is in that north section of Kenya but we weren't allowed there at that point there was no access permitted to go through to there it was just too dangerous so unfortunately Lake Turkana had to come off the list of places we were going to visit on the way and uh, end of the two days, got to a military checkpoint, signed out, thanks, thanks to all the soldiers in the convoy. It was very, very uneventful for us, thankfully, if a little nerve-wracking. And we were gone. Off we went. We were released into Kenya. So, I'm not sure which country, the, what number country this made, but uh, yeah, we were into Kenya and it was uh, looking good. So the first stop on the way down was Nairobi. Uh, sorry, Nairobi. It's nicknamed Nairobi because it has such a bad reputation. Uh, from all the people overland, there's so many robberies of uh, overlands and, and backpackers in Nairobi that it has got the nickname Nairobi. So we weren't. I, I'd visited Nairobi before in my years past, and I had actually been robbed there. So. Nairobi we sort of skipped, we entered the outskirts of Nairobi, stayed in a nice campsite, uh, tanked up with food, fuel, water, and then our plan was to head to the coast, uh, Bombasa, and go and see the beautiful coastline of Kenya. The morning we were going to set off, news came that there'd been a gun attack in Mombasa, and some bombs. So we crossed that off the list and thought, let's not go there. So we diverted, <coughs> excuse me, and went slightly further south from Mombasa uh, towards the Tanzanian border to a place called Tiwi Beach. And it was wonderful. We got down there, there was nobody there. Absolutely nobody. We found this little place that had like self-contained rooms um, that we could sleep in. Uh, but of course we had the Land Rover so we could actually you know, use the showers and things inside. Access to the beach, beautiful Indian Ocean water. And after all our travels across the Sahara and the worries of convoys and, and coming through Kenya and all the extra scares we'd had there, we just chilled for two weeks beside the Indian Ocean 
resting, recovering, eating fresh food because there was no supermarkets or anything there. Uh, so everything was fresh, fresh from the sea, fresh from the, the land, fresh fruit and veg and fish and octopus, uh, calamari I should say, squid. Um, it was really a nice to rest and recover there. And yes, we did investigate looking at going into the famous Kenyan National Park, but it hasn't changed much now. If you take your own vehicle in, it's really expensive, like several hundred US dollars to take your own vehicle into the parks, plus as a foreigner, hundreds of US dollars per person to enter the park. And then camping uh, is all additional to that, and that was very expensive, and we couldn't afford that. And the other option was to go on a, a organized safari, and we felt, no, we're going to Southern Africa where we can see a lot of wildlife, so we decided to skip the national parks of Kenya, head down to Tanzania, and take the coast road down, down to Dar es Salaam, and then maybe investigate some of the wildlife of Southern Africa, because Southern Africa does have some of the best wildlife viewing game parks in the world. So we skipped through most of Kenya, really, even though we wanted to see things, we ended up not going there for security reasons. Dropped down in, oh, <coughs> sorry, dropped down into Dar es Salaam. Um, Dar es Salaam is a beautiful city, and of course we then, oh, we'll take the opportunity to go to Zanzibar, because uh, Zanzibar is just off Dar es Salaam, and again, a fascinating history. Dr. Livingstone and uh, various things, but once again, our plans were foiled because pirates had attacked Zanzibar and burnt down the main town, uh, the main tower in the town. So again, we thought, maybe not the best time to go to Zanzibar. Now, thankfully, over the years, Zanzibar is settler and is, I have been back since, and it's a wonderful place to visit. So if you get the opportunity, go visit Zanzibar. It's really, really lovely. So, even in Tanzania, we're sort of like, hmm. Now, we did drive by, oh, I forgot the name of the town, where you see Kilimanjaro, and we did get a beautiful glimpse of Kilimanjaro. It wasn't the best time of year, weather-wise, but we did see the snow-capped top of Africa's highest mountain. But then, we received a message that we were needed, or well, not needed, somebody had offered us a job. So we had to make a decision because we were planning from Tanzania to carry on down the coast into Mozambique and investigate down that coast, the whole Indian Ocean coast. Looks to be very, very beautiful. That was our plan. But then we had a call. Well, actually, we didn't have a call. We had, yes, we did have a call. We got a message saying that there was a job available for us and could we come as soon as possible? 